Oh, kids, today we have another fun one. We have the Sony FX30 here in my right hand. This is an APS-C camera that was recently released by Sony, and it is a video beast. And over here, we have the A7C in my left hand, which I think is one of the most underrated cameras right now in the camera world. And uh, these are very different cameras for very different people, but the people have asked me if I can show some side-by-side -side footage comparing the two cameras, and I give the people what they want, like a good YouTube king, which is what I call myself, and my wife, boy, boy does she love that. Anyway, let's get into it. So first and foremost, I gotta tell you that I bought and paid for the Sony FX30 with my wife's hard-earned money, as well as the a7 IV that you're looking at, and the a7 III, which I have, and the ZV-E10. I have a lot of Sony cameras, but I do not own the a7C. So I reached out to Sony, and they were kind enough to lend over the a7C so I could do some side-by-side -side footage. I have used this camera a lot, so but it was still nice of them to send it over so that I could directly compare the two and settle some curiosity for a lot of you out there. So like I said in that perfect intro, these are different cameras for different people. I will talk about that at the end, but let's go straight into some footage right now. I went out there in Handsome Alley, put them side by side, and uh, let's check it out. So obviously you can get these cameras to match pretty well in a lot of situations, but just a little bit of tweaking in the old color grading. But did you see how well the Sigma 16 mil f1.4 held up against the 24 millimeter G Master? This is why the Sigma 16 mil is my most recommended lens for the Sony APS-C system. Now the uh, A7C can actually use the 16 mil from uh, Sigma as well. It just goes into APS-C crop mode. I'll show you a bit of footage of that later on. It's one of the benefits of the A7C. But right now, because I like going to the parks and making people think I'm a crazy person by talking to my cameras, let's do a vlogging test. The A7C and the FX30, they both record the gyroscopic data to the card there. So you can run that through the free program, Cattle's Browse, and you get this gimbal-like footage without a gimbal and uh, there's also the catalyst prepare which is a paid upgrade but i find catalyst browse is really all i need for my vlogging life check this out look at how smooth this is absolutely fantastic a lot of people don't realize the a7c also records the gyroscopic data i think this is fantastic i would love for one day for this to be able to be recorded straight in camera and used like this kind of like the way the gopro does it anyway a man can dream and this is the FX30 over here with Catalyst Browse. Both of these cameras, very capable vlogging cameras, especially because of that gyroscopic data that is recorded. Look at how smooth this is. This one is in S-Log3 because I can utilize that 10-bit footage if I wanted to make this, you know, super like a uh, born identity, saving private Ryan, any form of Matt Damon movie. You could just uh, color grade the crap out of this if you wanted. And this is just with the IBIS right here on the A7C. As you can see, it is, I feel like Tom Buck making the puns. As you can see, it is not quite as stable, nowhere near as stable as the Catalyst Browse. It is still usable in a pinch if you're nice and careful, but uh, I wouldn't go running with this, you know what I mean? Still, very nice that the A7C has the IBIS. Now this is with the active stabilization on the FX30 and the active stabilization works quite well. Now it does crop in, I have to hold my arm out a little bit further to get that same field of view. But uh, as you can see, the uh, active stabilization works better than the A7C's IBIS. At least that's what I have found in the past. Did I prove myself wrong? We'll find out in post.
So the FX30 and its active steady shot is really quite good compared to the A7C and its steady shot. So for vlogging, I would either use the A7C on a gimbal or I would go with Catalyst Browse. Now uh, with the FX30, you can just get a wider lens like the Sony 11 millimeters or the Viltrox 13 millimeters and then use the active steady shot and you'll still have a very wide field of view and a pretty stable image. And now let's show you a test here in the studio between the two cameras. And now, like I promised, I'm gonna show you the 16 millimeter F1.4 from Sigma on the A7C here in the studio. Uh, check that out. So you see how you can use the cheaper APS-C lenses for video on the A7C, which is great. I wouldn't use it for photo because you would drop down to 10 megapixels and I don't think that is enough megapixels. So I would stick to full frame lenses for photos, but for video, you can definitely mix and match. Now, did you see how I was using the S-Log3 with the A7C here in the studio? Normally you don't wanna use S-Log3 because this is an eight bit camera. You wanna use S-Log3 on 10 bit cameras. One of the reasons I bought this, but here in the studio, you know, I have my lights set up perfectly. I uh, am able to dial in my exposure just right. So I don't have to do a ton of pulling of the exposure. I don't have to push the colors around because I'm just keeping it a nice natural color grade. So the uh, S-Log3 actually works just fine here in the studio, but you will find it doesn't work fine in a lot of situations here. I'll just uh, bring you outside. Let, let's just take a look. So this first clip here is from the A7C and I did a crazy color grade on this just to make sure that the image broke apart. And plus, you don't know me, I could be doing a documentary about silhouettes on Mars and look at the banding in the sky, it's just terrible. And all of the noise and the artifacts, this image is no good. So let's switch over to the FX30 and boom, look at that, 10 bit. The sky is just blue again. It's uh, you don't see any of that banding, at least in my edit here. I don't know what you guys are seeing with YouTube and what YouTube will do to my footage, but I guarantee you it is much, much better on the FX30. And now let's go do another test where the FX30 will definitely beat the A7C and that is in slow motion. Now, of course, having 120 frames per second in 4K is better than not. The A7C doesn't even have 60 frames per second in 4K, which is too bad. So you have to go down to 1080 and that is a bit softer. Now I use that for years. I still use it sometimes on the A7 IV. I'll just use 120 frames per second in 1080. And I put on my 4K timeline. By the time I you know, put it on YouTube, most people don't seem to notice, but I did get the FX30 to have the 4K 120. That's one of my main reasons. You, it does crop in, so you gotta back up a little bit, but you still get that sharpness that you just saw in the video. So that is a big point for the FX30. And now let's do a test where the A7C will definitely win against the FX30 and that is in low light. I will also throw in the iPhone 13 Pro just so that you see that the FX30 is still quite good in low light. So uh, let's go out to the east wing of my estate now in the backyard. Now 
I think the FX30 is fine in low light if you take it anywhere where there are lights at all. But if you're an absolute pitch darkness, you're out, you're looking for the Blair Witch because you didn't understand that movie, then you're going to want the uh, A7C. This thing can see in the dark and if that is what you're looking for, this is the way to go. Now I'll do a rolling shutter test. I thought the FX30 was a little better with rolling shutter, but then when we went into the APS-C crop mode, I thought the A7C was actually a little bit better. So now let's talk a little bit about who these cameras are for. And I think the A7C is a fantastic hybrid camera for those who have a video slant in their content creation. You can still take wonderful photos with it, as good as the A7 III. The photos, you can't tell the difference, in fact, between the A7 IV photos and my A7C photos for the most part. But it has this nice flip out screen. It's got the little viewfinder to help you take the photos and the video, the big full frame sensor to get that nice shallow depth of field and all of that dynamic range and fantastic low light. But it's got the one card slot. So if you're going in a professional setting, uh, then you definitely want to have like a, a, you know, external recorder to go along with recording internally. You want to back up if it's ever a situation where you can't lose the footage. And when it comes to photos, you're still only going to have the one card slot, so I wouldn't take this in for a professional photo shoot. But for online content creation, in all honesty, most of what I do here on YouTube, the A7C would be absolutely perfect for. Now, the A7 IV that you're looking at is better at everything pretty much than uh, the A7C except uh, about size. It's, the A7 IV is a little bit bigger. This guy's more streamlined, so it's better maybe, maybe for a gimbal depending on your gimbal. But the A7 IV is about $1,000 more than the A7C right now. So if you don't need the 10-bit and all the extra footage that comes along with it and the 4K 60 that's in that, if you're okay with just having you know, 4K up to 30 frames per second and no higher frame rates and you just want to use the 60 or the 120 and 1080, then fine. The A7C, man, it's a great camera. And also the A7C is so small and light. Like, just look at the size of this thing. And look, this is a 24 millimeter f 2.8 and uh, one of the G lenses, just this little package. You could take it around, perfect little travel camera or a camera for a gimbal. I mean, look at this. This guy's a bit of a chunky boy here, the FX30. It's the same size body as the FX3. So if you want a little camera to take around that's not going to bother your back, get yourself some small little lenses, A7C. Now with the FX30, this should go without saying, but this is a professional's video camera right here. You have the 10-bit color. You can actually do 16-bit raw output to something like a Ninja 5. You can do time code in. It has the two card slots for redundant recording. It has a fan so that it will never overheat. It is laid out like a video camera. Look at this. Oh, no, cover up my greasy spots right here. And just look at all of the peaking and the display and all of the stuff that you would need, the zebras and the shutters, the focus magnification. This thing is just such a great camera when it comes to video work. It's got the Cine EI menu, which makes it much better to use in a video situation. It's got the quarter 20s all over it. You can hook this up, rig it up to however you see fit. It is just such a great video camera and I love using it every day. It is, it is one of my favorite cameras ever to use when it comes to video. So two wonderful cameras that can make you very happy depending on who you are. You just got to figure out who you are and what you need. And I hope this settled a little curiosity for you. Thanks again to Sony for sending out the A7C that I can compare it directly. And uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.